Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're gonna take a look at some procedural modeling and let's create something like a low poly fence perhaps. Um, at least something to show you guys how you can work procedurally in geometry nodes to create for example easier fences or brick walls or even larger structures. Um, so let's just dive in. I'm gonna delete my cube. Um, actually I'm not gonna delete my cube. Let's, let's just... Yeah let's delete it. You know? Huh? Shift A, curve, we're gonna work with a curve, right? And that's the only thing that really matters you, if you enter geometry nodes is um, what kind of object you're working with, right? If you have just an object, you can add modifiers, um, um, but with curves, it is limited, of course. It's limited, you have different kind of modifiers, you have um, the curve tab that you can do things with, and you can actually go into edit mode and use the curve tools. An object um, that is not a curve, you can't really access that, right? You can't really draw curves whatsoever, okay? And for this one, I want to draw curves that are turned into fences or whatever, right? So we can do that, right? But to do that, we need to start with a curve. So fine. Um, I'm just going to go into my front view, press A, uh, sorry, tap A, delete vertices, and we can just draw the shape. Or let's actually go to the top view. Um, the shape of our fence something like this perhaps a nice little spiral to test it out properly right and um, remember to save your file fence beautiful i'm going to open this up to our geometry node editor press n to hide this little menu hit new and here we are all right so how do we start this off well if you want to scatter anything onto a curve you need to work with their points Right, and by default, if you have a Bezier curve, you won't really have a lot of points because the only points that you will have are the control points. So we need to resample this curve to actually create different points, right? So now we have 10 points, for example, but we can end up with a lot more. And that will depend on how much, um, how many pieces we will have in our fence, how many components, right? So let's set this to 20. And right away, we can just add this to a group input, press N, group, and rename this to be um let's say component density right beautiful um so that is our first little modular structure that we have set up so uh, next up i want to spawn something on our curve right the poles the fence poles pretty much so we can do that quite easily by hitting shift a and we can find a cube i suppose and that is going to be our instance object shift a and should we use a cube? Nah, let's delete that and find Shift A, a curve line first. I'm gonna just work in curves first. Shift A, instance on points there, and connect this with a join geometry there, right? Easy as that. Connect your curve line to the instance, and you now have curve lines onto those instance, and you can control the height. Right away, I want to find a combine XYZ there, and have this Z value controlling the height, and I want this to be adjustable, right? Modular. So connect that there, press N, and rename this to be fence height. Height. There we go. That's already looking interesting, like something we start off with. Beautiful. So we want to now scatter this bottom curve, right? This one. Anywhere here in between in the quantity that we want. But they all space should be... Um, the same as this curve, right? Following that curve. So how do we do that? Well, it is not that hard, but it is a bit tricky. So what we need to do is we want to instance this curve onto, let's say, this first little point, right? Just one of those vertical lines. We don't want to spawn it on every point of those vertical lines, but just on one of them. So how do we do that first? So what we want to do is we want to separate these instances so we can only work with the first one. So we can drag this out and separate geometry, and then we can set this to instance, and the selection, drag that out, is an index that we shift A, compare, integer, there we go, to zero, right? So it's always going to look at that first instance, this one. Um, so now our selection is going to be um, we have greater and we should set this to equal is now going to be just that first line. So that's beautiful. So now we can use that selection as an instance on points as the points, right? 
Um, and that means that if we now join our geometry a bit later there, beautiful, and we, for example, use a little cube, we can see what is happening. Scale it down a little bit. Right, so we now have an instance at the top and at the bottom. Beautiful. Now, if we only want that to be at the top, we can find Shift A, Realize Instance, and we just disconnect this little top line, right? Our original curve, it will be respawned whenever we instance that. Now, the problem is that if we use this curve as the instance object, it's going to be at the wrong location, simply because it's going to spawn this curve on this first pole while our origin point is there. So it's going to move the entire curve to the left to this origin point, the new point. Um, so in order to fix that, we need to reset this pole where we instance on back to the origin position. And that's actually not that hard because we can store the origin position of our curve right here at the start, for example. Let's shift right mouse this into a little single line, move this to the left, shift A, capture attribute. And if you want to store the um, ob object origin, <laughs> we can simply set this to be instance, right? If you set this at points, it's gonna store the position of each point. If you set this to an instance, it's gonna store the position of the object, right? The origin position. Then just shift A, find the position node and connect it in here. Now, if we want to, let me delete this. If we want to set the position of our um, separated geometry to this origin location, we need to set the position with a shift a set position node. there we go let me delete or let's let's just move this out of the way for a sec so this set position needs to be changed the position needs to be new then if we control shift click on the set position node to show what it looks like and we connect this position there it's gonna move our curve to the origin position isn't that beautiful so now when we delete this viewer, we can see that we're actually getting a curve on the right position, right? So how do we now actually make sure that we have multiple points on that curve? How do we add more of those lines if we want more of those um, those rails there? Um, so what we can do is after we set the position and realize it, we can hit Shift A and trim our curve. Right? And if we trim this, and this is not actually adding more once, but this is going to control how far from the top this is. Um, and that is something that I, um, out of the blue, wanted to do first. Right, That's just how it works. Uh, I can now just trim the end points a little bit so we have a different end position. And I want this to be another group input. So drag it out, group input, uh, hit N to open up your menu, and name this to be um, top... Um, clearance that sounds nice right so beautiful now we can control that and after we trim that I want to split it up in different segments so shift a resample curve and there we go right so we can now set however many we want of that horizontal lines so I'm gonna also connect this to a group input so we can do that with the same input here Control H to unhide the inputs and connect that there and open up your menu and name this um, real density, I suppose. I'm not sure yet how that's going to be named. And press N to close. Beautiful. So now we have got curves that are resampled on our, our uh, instance on our vertical lines. So now we need to actually give it a little bit of geometry. So how exactly are we going to do that? Okay, so we have this geometry. That is cool. And we have our vertical geometry, which is this, which is also cool. So we can now just convert these to a mesh, shift A to mesh. And we can find a profile curve that's going to be, for example, a curve. Do we have a curve square? I thought it was a thing. Let's go to the curve um, and let's go to the primitives. Do we have. No. Oh. Perhaps we can go with a curved circle though and set the resolution to four. That should be a Q or a square, am I right? Should be. So if I now set the radius lower. Yeah. This is pretty much a, a square. Right? So that is cool. That's looking quite cool. Um let's just fill the caps so in top view we can actually see what it looks like. So you can see it's not rotated. 
in the correct way of the curve. And to do that, we can just drag this out into an align a rotation to vector and then have the vector be the curve tangent, right? And the curve tangent is just the direction of the curve. Now it's going to rotate all these poles, all these, the entire, sorry, line into that direction. But I just want to rotate this on the Z axis. So instead, I'm just going to find a vector math set to multiply. And I am just going to multiply X and Y with zero because I only want to rotate on the Z value, which is going to be multiplying with one. Right, so that's looking uh, beautiful. Now it is rotated 45 degrees, I suppose, or 90, what is it? 45, I think. So we can just rotate that um, in the Z direction by adding another Shift A vector math, right? We can rotate around Z by a default value. And that default value should be, let's think about this. We have got, this is in radians and we have degrees. So we need to have Pi is half a circle, which means pi divided by 2 is a quarter of a circle, which is 90 degrees. Pi divided by 4 should be the trick. Looks quite good, right? Amazing. So now we have poles into the right rotations. Amazing, amazing. So now for the sideways poles, horizontal ones, we have another instance on points here that we can convert to a mesh tool. Shift A to mesh. And then profile curve is going to be also a curved circle. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Connect that up there. And beautiful, right? We can make this a little bit smaller. And let's rotate this right away. Transform geometry. And I want to rotate this around Z in 45 degrees too, right? So now they are perfectly straight. Beautiful. So they are now all shaded smooth, it looks like. I want them to be not shaded smooth. <laughs> Shift A. Shift shade smooth and let's uncheck that right so beautiful little fence here amazing so you can see it's quite easy to do actually um all i want to do is change the radius of our curve based on the group input right so right before we turn this to a mesh we can hit shift a set curve radius no set curve radius and drag that in there set this to one drag it out group input um, this is going to be our vertical radius. Um, I should probably rename that here instead of typing it into the value. That works better. <laughs> vertical pole radius. Did I type that right? Probably not. Radius. Still not right. Oh my god. There we go. And then the same thing I want for this one. Right? Set curve radius. And drag in another group input. Group input. And let's set this one to be named horizontal pole radius, right? Did I type that weird? No. So now we can change the radius of the poles individually. Isn't that cool? Now, I think usually we don't even have one of these poles on the bottom as well, right? That's just something that pops into my mind now. Um, so we can just trim the curve um, at the start as well. Right, and we can just connect that here, name this um, bottom clearance. Oh my god, my typing is going poor clearance. And connect that, uh, let's see, below the top clearance. Right, so we can control both of them. Looking quite decent, right? Density 4, amazing. So <laughs> now we already created some beautiful fences um, in the geometry nodes, right? And we already have a beautiful procedural setup. So now if you draw different types of curves, right, you always end up with a beautiful little curve. Now, if you draw this on a surface, let's see how it looks like if we do that, right? If we have a surface, let's say a plane, we subdivide this a bunch of times. There we go. Scale it up and let's sculpt this into some different shapes, right? I'm just going to do that real quick to see if it would work on a curved surface as well. Would be useful, I suppose. Let's go into edit mode and let's enable our surface snapping and just draw a little beautiful curve there. Um, works like a charm, doesn't it? Uh, well, pretty much, not completely. So a few of those points after we resample this curve um, are not at the surface anymore. Okay, so what we can do is shift A set position 
And then we can simply drag out our position to our geometry proximity because I want to get the closest distance to this object surface floor to connect our curve to. And so we can drag this up to an object info and the object is going to be, you guessed it, I already did that, uh, you guessed it, <laughs> it is going to be our input of the group because we want to be able to select this whenever we want. Set this to relative by the way and select your plane. And you can see it snaps to our ground beautifully. Now the other curves that were here will also snap, of course, to that object, right? They will try to also connect there. So let me just move that to the left so our curves come back and scale everything up in the y direction a little bit. There we go, right? Just to have them reappear. And, but you can see it works like a charm and we can set our curve or our surface object to whatever we want. One of the other options we could choose if we now draw a very short curve, our poles will be very close together. Um, so let's say we want to resample this based on the length of the curve. We can set this to be a length and then it will be the same distance for every curve object, right? So we should then just have our inputs be a distance between the poles, right? I think that's better. So I'm gonna open up my menu, delete my component density, collect my length here and rename this to um, distance between poles, right? That's clear enough, I suppose. And just crank this to the top, beautiful. Fence height, distance between poles, right? Clearance, everything works beautifully. Then in the end, I can imagine you want some uh, material to be on there, right? So in the end, we can hit Shift A, set material and add this to the group input as well. And we can set the material. For example, I have a wood material. And um, let's go to rendered view. It's probably gonna look not anything close to what we want it to be, right? So you can see it's just brown. And um, reason why is because we don't have any UV that is unwrapped for our object and most materials will be based on a UV. So the fun thing is that once we work with curves and curve to mesh, we can very easily store the UV by Let's see, shift A, find a capture attribute there and capture attribute there. And it's going to be a shift A spline parameter, spline parameter, factor into both of them, right? That's going to store a value from zero at the bottom to one at the top and for the side ones as well, zero to one. And that's basically the information we're going to need for the UV, right? The X and the um, Y axis. And then we can, after the curve to mesh, store named attributes into a vector and let's name this store UV. And then just combine X, Y, Z here. This is gonna be Y and connect this to the value. Then let's go to the shader editor and let's find our wood material, right? See how it looks. It's a bit of a weird material, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna connect a new one real quick just so I can show this a bit easier find a cool wood, this is cool wood, right? So this is what you mostly find, right? And then let's actually set the correct material here as well, wooden surface, there we go. And now you can see how it's actually looking and you can play around with the skill um, and so let's disable displacement in the settings of the material, right? I only want bump, bump only. And now we can change the skill a little bit so this can all look a bit better perhaps. Let's actually change all of them at the same time by holding shift and dragging your mouse down. Let's crank it up a little bit, right? Let's try and create the material of how it should look. Something like this, perhaps. And we can do the exact same steps for uh, this curve to mesh here. So what we need is the capture attribute there, get your, get your capture attribute there, <laughs> supply parameter there, factor in the factor in the factor, and another store named attribute with our combine X, Y, Z. This is going to be the Y, right? Curve profile is going to be our Y. And this is going to be our X and combine it into that, right? And the fun thing is you combine it, you can combine it in the exact same UV map, right? You don't really need to change it that much unless you want to access their values at the same time. But you can actually kill your UV your mapping, right? I can just mute this. You can just kill everything right here as well, right? Vector math with a multiply, everything at one. You can now see that I can stretch my UV in one direction, for example, right? 
Beautiful. And I could do the same thing for the other one, which means we have control over our UVs individually, which is quite useful if you ask me. Right, I can compress everything a little bit. And there we go, we got a wooden material. Now, the only last problem we have is that those tops are horrible. And that is because they are not UV unwrapped and that is quite tricky because there's no real way to separate that unwrapping from the rest of it. So I'm gonna fill our tops in a different way. So uncheck that, let's separate this match, separate geometry. And I want to separate this with a value that comes from the curve before, right? This curve, I just want to store that endpoint at the top. So we can do that by hitting capture attribute here and shift A endpoint selection. So I just want to store the endpoint, connect that there. And then we can use this to separate our geometries. Now our selection is going to be all the top faces of our uh, cubes, pretty much of our squares, right? So this we can use to extrude mesh, right? I'm gonna just cheat this and I'm gonna extrude this with an offset of the position, right? So that means that we're extruding the edges, by the way. Now it's gonna extrude upwards, but I'm gonna find shift A vector math. Nope, vector math. There we go. And I'm just going to multiply all the x's with one except z, which is going to be zero. And beautiful. And then I don't want to scale with one, but I want to scale with, let's say, minus two, right? That's going to be the center point. Minus two. Amazing. And that is going to work for all the um, for all the radiuses we have. So that doesn't really matter. So let's join that back up right there and remove this. So right now it's still looking weird because we still haven't unwrapped this. So unwrap this is very easy. It's just a regular plane. So shift A, store named attribute, vector, name this store UV as well. And the value is going to be UV unwrap. That's right, there is a UV unwrap. Angle based works perfect for this stuff. Now you can also just set this as a different material if you would like that, right? The top of of wood is sometimes a different material. Let's see if there's something in Blender Kit for the top. Perhaps this could even look cool, right? Let's just try that for fun. Wood. Set material. There we go. And this is going to be that wood. Is that the correct wood? I'm not sure. But we should be able to see it soon enough. Um, Let's actually disconnect this line for a second and join it after the rest so we can actually set the material independently. Join geometry here and set material there, right? And set it to be wood. Set the right wood. Seems to be, right? Um, and then just go to that shader editor and make sure to find shift A, an attribute and store UV here as well and connect that there. Beautiful. Is this the correct material though? It is not. But we should select wood one here in that case, right? Uh, there we go. And of course, make sure that you set your displacement to pump only. Right, there we go. Amazing. And we can now scale this down or up and even move this so it's a bit more at the center of that pole, right? Something like that looks quite decent already. Of course, you can tweak this to your own liking. Everything is tweakable when you're working with procedural <laughs> geometry, right? So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helped. If you liked that, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. You can now make fences, so good luck. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.